Welcome to another PLS Minute. My name is Tim O'Sullivan, and I'll be your host today as we take a look at Forum Lighting. We've got a special treat in store for you as we are joined by Steve Seligman, Vice President of Specification Sales and Product Development for Forum. Our interview with Steve will start in just a second. We're going to touch on quite a few topics, including Forum's history, their strengths as an architectural lighting company, and go over some of their product offerings. You'll find timestamps in the description below of the various topics we cover, in case you want to come back later and revisit a certain segment. And with that, let's get started. Well, Steve, thanks for being here today. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're doing this interview and kind of helping everyone get to know Forum Lighting and, and learn a little bit about you guys. So if you could, you want to just give a, a brief intro into Forum's backstory, a little bit of your history, sure. how you guys started? Sure. So Forum uh, actually was started in 1963 by uh, Norman Garrett. He had a couple partners. It was him and some guys out of Chicago um, who started. He was actually the, I believe it was a light of rep in, uh, in Pittsburgh. And, you know, the American story basically started making light fixtures in his garage. Our first couple of fixtures were, we used to make these hockey puck things, HID, in, indirect hockey pucks. So they're like two foot in diameter, like eight, nine inches deep. And that was that was architectural lighting in 1963. Basically, lamb lighting, SPI, and forum making those kind of fixtures, and that's kind of what we got started on. And uh, it's still owned by the Garrett family, uh, some 50 something years later, and we're still located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, some 50 something years later. So we are we're a dying breed. We're uh, a fully independent, privately held architectural lighting manufacturer. Uh, we do all of our manufacturing in our facility in Pittsburgh. We have about 75,000 square feet, something like that. We are also a union shop. So everything that we produce has an IBEW label on it, as well as uh, Made in America label on it. So everything we do is is fabricated in the United States. We source whenever possible from U.S. sources. So if you're working on federal money projects where Buy America comes into play, we meet Buy America or Buy American which will probably come back into play very shortly because I'm sure they're gonna, that, that was the TARP type of program, which I'm sure will be coming back into play uh, in the near future, given the current uh, climate of things. Right, absolutely. What kind of product offering is Forum best known for right now? What is your sort of bread and butter? Uh, I like to say, uh, yeah, I like to say we're a, uh, you know, a commercial architectural lighting manufacturer. Currently, our largest volume is linear rib I call them ribbons of light, you know, anything from two inches up to six inches. We do lots and lots of that stuff, recessed surface, pendant, wall mounted, all of our all of our fixtures that are not recessed into a plenum are fully aluminum extrusions. The ones that are in uh, recessed into a plenum can we can make them fully aluminum or we also do a hybrid where it's a steel back box with aluminum trim. And to that we've added the what we call curved linear fixtures. In other words the straight fixtures that are curved, right? Um, so that's our arc line. So they can, we can join all those together to make some really cool patterns. We've introduced this year um, some really, some a new exciting cove light product called Omnico, which is, is ultimately probably gonna replace our clean edge product, but does everything the clean edge does and a whole lot more. Also, um, we do uh, exterior fixtures that complement our interior fixtures. So we have our Aquas line. The Aquas line is a line of products that physically look like our interior products as far as uh, the length and the width and the height and the lenses, but carry a wet location label. And also we offer some environmental fixtures, IP66 stuff. 20% of what we do is custom, 80% of what we do is standard or standard modified. We'd like to say modified so people don't freak out. You say custom, they get a little, little antsy. So anything that we make that's standard, that is tooled, we'll, we will modify per for different applications based on the needs of the designer. And then 20% of it is full-blown custom, but full-blown custom being, you know, you, you doodle it on a cocktail napkin sketch and we build it. That would entail new new tooling and uh, new UL listings and things like that. Those tend to be larger projects. Some examples of that would be, we did the transportation hub at Ground Zero, the Santiago Calatrava transportation hub, kind of looks like a porcupine coming out of the ground down in New York City. We're doing, uh, they're building a new, uh, new four new platforms that, Grand Central Terminal in, in New York City as well. So we're doing the platform lighting there, that airport jobs, the things of that nature, Those that's like the 20%. I know when we were there visiting your facility, it was, it was really impressive. Not only your capabilities of, of what you could do in terms of 
taking a standard product and tweaking it, modifying it to fit an application or a job, but what you guys could do from a purely custom standpoint was really impressive. And the amount mm -hmm. of, uh, I guess, technical expertise and just sheer engineering, almost engineering perfection that went into it mm -hmm. was pretty astounding uh, to me. I guess, is there anything you can you can add to, to that front of it? I'm actually uh, an engineer by education. I just I make the joke, I made a wonky left turn. Now I kind of do this for a living. <laughs> right before the pandemic thing started, we had eight engineers on staff. Right now, I think we have six currently working for us. Um, she was still on, on, uh, on furlough. But uh, yeah, everything we do is heavily engineered. You know, when we do the custom projects, like the the like the ones we did that we're doing for Grand Central Station. I mean, these are incredibly intense designs. You know, the the, the platform fixtures. Yeah, these are fixtures that are going to be running for hundreds of feet, and they contain uh, not only light fixtures but security cameras, and PA systems, and uh, fire strobes, and all, all these other subsystems, and then the 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 dedicated wireways that have to go to those subsystems plus the lighting and the emergency lighting and uh, and all these things and then being it's a, uh, a train station has to be designed to last you know they have a life expectancy of, of at least 80 years so it's it's not your standard you go into a commercial space and you you see a two inch wide slot in the ceiling and behind it could be tin foil you know it can sometimes end up being a very you know cost driven product where those types these types of uh, applications aren't, and that translates into the product that we make day to day. You know, a, wa a watered down design to forum is is usually head and shoulders above what other people are doing on a daily basis for a standard product. So it's just it's just the way we think. That's the way we do things. You know, heavy, heavy, heavier gauge steel. Our standard products are are eighteen gauge steel as opposed to a lot of companies where they'll do, they'll, they'll go to twenty or twenty four because it saves money. But you know, just like it's just not the way we think. I mean, we were even we impressed were. with, uh, <laughs> I remember coming back and just thinking about the end caps. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. Fixtures. I was like, there's so much engineering in the end cap. I was yeah. blown away. Yeah, caps, yeah, like I said, we, I, you know, some people use a flat piece of steel and just slap it on the end of the fixture or, um, you know, you can do a die casting, but we, we, we choose to, to machine each one of our end caps, one at a, well, not one at a time, but individually on a three axis CNC mill. And we actually mill the profile of, of the, the individual extrusion into each end cap, depending on the product. So there's a perfect mate between the end cap and the, and, uh, and the, uh, the extrusion. Again, it's a quality product. And you can tell when you, when you pick up, one, yeah. when you feel it, when you look at yeah. it, I think you can, yeah. you can definitely see I, it. I joke around. I say, yeah, we should sell it by the pound, not the foot. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned your steel product earlier. Talk a little bit about the unique adjustable design. Oh, sure. Yeah, and actually it translates into our, our uh, aluminum products as well. Uh, but uh, with our recess product, the, the forecast series, we offer for ease of installation, uh, we can provide a uh, end of row fixture that is field adjustable, field telescopic. So what that means is we give you one foot of adjustability. So as opposed to having to chase projects, especially when you're doing a wall to wall installation or a perimeter installation or something like that, where you, you know, you're going to be doing corners or, go, you know, going, you know, dead wall to wall, you, you have to chase those types of projects on, on shop drawings, sometimes through, you know, revision after revision. And then even then it gets into the field and you find out the wall moved an inch just because of field conditions, nobody saw coming or somebody doesn't know how to read a ruler or something, whatever the case may be. And uh, then, you know, the fixture doesn't fit or there's a gap or something weird's going on. Uh, so what we came up with is a system that gives you that foot of adjustability at the end. So not only is the housing adjustable in the field, but also the gear tray inside of the fixture is adjustable as well. So you not only to get the, the comfort of knowing that your housing is going to go wall to wall, but also your lighting is going to go wall to wall without any interruptions or hot spots or uh, uh, dark spots or drop offs or anything like that, because it has a, a actually a telescopic gear tray inside the housing as well, which we actually patented. We have a patent on it, although it's been copied, which they say, uh, right, uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. It is what it is, but it's uh, uh, it, it, the idea is though, it really it's, it makes it easier to get jobs out faster onto onto the job site and also with less problems. It's a fantastic yeah. feature and it's it's incredible when you show someone how it works and mm. immediately i think most people can see 
the the impact that it has oh, sure. in terms of yeah, making, been, yeah. making the job cycle simpler when it comes to Excellent. Right. If anybody's done any 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 kind of work, yeah, they re, 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 oh geez, that, 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 I could have used that last week. Yeah, we've built that into our aluminum products as well. Obviously, the housing is not going to be telescopic, but we offer a telescopic gear tray, and the housing can be cut. And there is a video uh, on YouTube that we put together to show uh, the contractor how to cut the housing on on a, a standard uh, miter saw that can be done in the field. So, uh, if it, if need be. Um, it can, it, it, it's also a, a possibility. How about some, uh, let's talk about new products for Forum. I know you mentioned the Omnicove. You want to tell us a little bit about what the Omnicove is and, and how it adds on so, the Forum's lineup? Yeah, so the Omni, we have, as, as you know, we have a product called Clean Edge Cove. Clean Edge Cove is an integrated cove solution, again, with the telescopic features and all that kind of stuff. It was sort of limited in application in that you had to buy our extrusion and our gear tray and build it into the architecture. So we wanted to come out with something that had a little bit more uh, appeal or use. So we developed a product called, it's called Omnicove. So we have a, a lighting module. It's a very small lighting module. It's less than two inches high by a little bit less than three inches wide. And that carries the LED and the driver. And one of the one of the big asks we got a lot with the Clean Edge Cove was an adjustable LED component. So you could aim the light coming out of the cove because a lot of the big question you get is, how far from the ceiling should I put the cove? And I'm like, well, it depends what you're trying to do and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, that was one of the key features that we wanted to build into the Omni Cove. So it does have uh, an LED carrier that has uh, 35 degrees a rotatable adjustment. So you can you can actually in the field or we can preset it for you. Adjust the optic to adjust adjust its output through a range of 35 degrees. Additionally, uh, we designed a very high performance forward throw optic so you get a a very very low forward throw performance out of the fixture. Very traditional cove light type of uh, application where we can get the the, the the maximum candela down around 10 degrees coming out of the front of the fixture and then very you know very tight roof on the output so it's not you know, that big lambergian blobo light but a very nice flat light that, those, those are two key features of the size and the adjustability then we looked at it and wanted to make it easy to install so uh, it's a plug-in connector from fixture to fixture so the contractor doesn't have to go in the fixture and external mounting tab so you can mount it on the outside. So if they're building a cove, you just kind of drop this thing in, screw it down, plug it together, go on to the next fixture. Additionally, so that would be for a field constructed cove. It also has been uh, sized and configured so it will it is compatible with Armstrong's Axiom, uh, but it is sized to do that. So again, so it will fit into a, an Axiom cove system. Okay. Uh, additionally, we have made our own external cove extrusions like the clean edge cove so we can do a integrated cove solution dropping the lighting module into it or we also came up with an additional extrusion that has a, a smooth bottom so now you could do a post construction cove installation and we've also added a, a wet location feature to it so it is uh, can be offered as a wet location fixture. So hence the name Omni Cove, because it really can do just about any kind of cove you can think of. And again, if, if people are interested in seeing that, like I, I mentioned before, we do offer, we will ship a sample to your house or to your office and then kind of do one of these things where you can do a one-on-one. -on -one. I can you ask me questions, I can do a little presentation so you can actually touch it and feel it and see how it works. And I think that'd be really handy in today's environment for yeah. uh, a mm -hmm. lot of our designers and specifiers who sure. Can sure. need to see and, and, and play with and then look at and touch a product and, all and also it's a, no, we're talking and it's available with obviously with static white and tunable white and tunable color and all that kind of stuff in general we're control agnostic so we can work with anybody's control system we're not tied to anybody when again one of the benefits of being an independent you know kind of have to get roped into that kind of stuff what do you see the uh the future forum looking like where do you see it going from here that's a good question one of the things I think due to what's going on right now, I, I just think when when commercial business gets soft, there's usually a lot of governmental type of work that comes along. So we play well in that world just because of everything we made in the United States and uh, those type of things. And those projects tending to need a certain type of attention. We have a lot of experience doing that. So I don't know if it's good or bad, but that'll probably be making up a bigger portion of our business in the near future. Everything we're looking at is um, for the commercial side of the world. You know, uh, as we were saying, 
as people go back into offices, they're going to expect to be living in the or working in the safest possible environment they can. So we're looking at human centric. I know that's a buzzword these days, but human centric type of lighting. Uh, we're uh, talking to companies that have come out with some pretty exciting products as far as the quality and the type of light that gets tied to the circadian rhythms and you know, blue light's a big issue right now. So not just tunable white, but really, you, again, human centric light that really is very in tune to what the, the human body needs to be healthy. Uh, sound dampening stuff, and that's a, that's kind of a, a, a been up and coming kind of thing. So I think, uh, you know, really looking at how to produce uh, fixtures that really fit the environment that we're going to be called on to fit into uh, going forward. Uh, that's going to be a big thing. Right? And it's not just how many lumens, you know, anymore. And that's not, that's not the, that's, you know, it's up until now, it's been, I, I joke around saying, is, you know, the guy with the most lumens wins. It's like driving a Ferrari, but it doesn't do you much good in crosstown traffic, right? So it's, it's going to be the guy who can get through crosstown traffic the most efficiently. Thanks so much, Steve. That was a lot of great information on forum lighting. Again, if you want to go back and revisit any of the topics we discussed, you'll find more information in the description below. Now, we want to take you through some beautiful application shots where we can see forum's amazing products in action. Today, we took a deep dive into Forum Lighting, reviewing their history, their strengths as an independent architectural lighting manufacturer, and their range of products and possibilities they provide. I want to again give a special thanks to Steve Seligman from Forum for taking the time to do this video. You'll find a link to Forum's website in the description below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when we post new videos.